All right, guys. So once again, we got to talk about Jill Biden and her racially insensitive comments that she made about Hispanics and Latinos at a Latinx inclusivity inclusive wooden X event. Okay, just a few days ago, in which she basically compared Latinos slash Hispanics uh, to breakfast tacos. Now, a lot of Hispanics did not. Uh, like those comments, okay? Uh, and she actually offended a whole lot of people. Now, uh, because she got backlash uh, because of these comments, these racially insensitive comments, uh, she did issue an apology, kind of, right? She didn't really personally apologize. She apologized through a Biden spokesperson, which I, I found to be interesting, okay? Uh, so that being said, uh, we got to talk about the views response to Jill Biden in her racially insensitive comments because I want to point out to you guys how these cackling hands, these liberal cackling hands cover Democrats when they make comments like this versus how they cover Republicans who make comments that they don't like or that are deemed to be racially insensitive, okay? I, I think it's night and day and it really goes to show you how biased these people are and, and how they handle Democrats with kid gloves so i want you guys to again pay attention to the tone and think about what would they be saying if jill biden was a republican and also think about what they think that democrats should apologize for what is worth apologizing over and what is not worth apologizing over right so that's what i want to talk about but before i get into that i just want to let you guys know um if you can't tell i am sick i am actually very sick um, I don't know if I have COVID. I don't think I have COVID because I had COVID before, almost two years ago, really. Um, and it didn't feel the same way. Uh, actually, I'm more sick now than I was when I knew I had COVID, but I might go get tested. Who knows? Um, so with that being said, I apologize if my voice sounds messed up or I'm sniffling or I'm coughing or whatever throughout the video because I, I actually am very sick. Uh, so with, with that being said, uh, I also let you guys know if you like my channel, you want to support my channel, you can do so using the links in the description below. You support the Patreon, you support the PayPal, you support the merch. There are multiple ways to support the channel if you would like to do so, including getting yourself one of my signature racist slash meme mugs. Uh, this mug is my racist mug that is a daily reminder of the 2022 definition of racist according to the left, which is anybody who disagrees with the Democrat Party. I also have added new shirts to the store that you guys can check out like this one, which says end woke supremacy. And there's a lot more cool shirts and uh, merch that I am going to be adding or that has been added to the store already. So if you guys want to check it out, you can check it out. So without further ado, let's go ahead and play this clip from The View and their coverage of Jill Biden comparing Hispanic slash Latinos to tacos. <laughs> Take a look. But we can't get those things on our own. Raul helped build this organization with the understanding that the diversity of this community, as distinct as the Bogodas of the Bronx, as beautiful as the Blossoms of Miami, and as unique as the breakfast tacos here in San Antonio, <laughs> is your strength. <laughs> these two ladies and the, for these two Latinas in the front <laughs> row are just crazy. They're her bogodas oh. and they're just, they're, they're, oh, he, they're no. just, I mean, yeah, bo they. bodega is what she you, meant to so say. So you, you think somebody might have read the speech beforehand and said, maybe you don't want to say it like this. Yeah. But this is, you know, I... I I won't even say what I what it is because it's you know we all step in poo from time to time mm -hmm. and so this happens but this was really you can hear the people going what did she say yeah. exactly. and then that nervous Wait, did she just but, say Boca? Uh, our our senior producer <laughs> said you know but who wrote the speech and went yes I got it right yeah. like mm -hmm. and then gave it to her because she has so many. Uh, I think high-level Latinas on her staff. Were they she, all at some other meeting without they, her? They were at some, They were not there. Let me tell you, I've been to these conventions. The margarita sometimes are so, a so, little too. So, something so, happened. You know what? Listen, I want to give her uh, points mm -hmm. for showing up. Mm -hmm. Pro tip: 
when speaking to Hispanics, really, really avoid any comparisons to tacos, enchiladas, chimichangas, alcapurrias. Yeah. Well, yeah. And, 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 speaking and about, chilaquiles. And speaking about anyone, yeah. don't you avoid food related to yeah. people? That is, tacos that, whether it's skin color, well, well you yeah, don't use you, food. I would be upset people. if somebody said, you bring the chicken out in people. Yeah. Right. You know, I was, I, I, I don't, I don't know who, who, I, yeah. That's kind of what, you know, that's. <laughs> it was. Yeah, in it, case it was. you're not, to, this is what. It, was, it yeah. was a racial stereotype that she, she used racial stereotypes. So I don't know who wrote that for her, but, and it was such an unforced error, right? Mm. And in doing so, she's talking about tacos and bogodas, which I've mm. never been to one. Um, <laughs> a bogoda a is when you mix a bodega with a pagoda. Oh, <laughs> pagoda? a pagoda. A pagoda so and a bodega is a bodega. That's a bogoda. A place in Bolivia. Oh. A bogoda. A bogoda. No, that's bogoda. Ah, I and see. that's Colombia. Colombia. But, oh. but I will okay. say, this is what we will say, this is what I will say. That's right, it is Columbia. Hello. Yeah. Um, we all, I don't know if we all have stepped in it. I know I have stepped in it. So, Dr. Jill, just, you know, hear the humor. We get it. We understood what you were trying to do. And just try not to do it again. Try not to do it again. That is the view's message to Jill Biden for making comments that if a Republican made those comments would be deemed racist. Do you guys notice how when Democrats make these type of comments, okay, they're called racially insensitive. When Republicans or conservatives make these types of comments, they're just flat out called racist, right? Uh, when, again, Democrats make comments like this, it's racially insensitive. When conservatives and Republicans make comments like this, it is racist. How many times have we heard over and over and over again, Sonny Holston, people on The View, accuse Republicans like Ron DeSantis of being racist for something that he said? Or when Trump, for example, says something that they deem to be racist. In fact, I want you guys to take a look of this clip uh, from The View uh, of their reaction, how they go into full-blown meltdown mode over Trump using the term African-American to describe one of his supporters who beat up somebody, allegedly, in a Ku Klux Klan out outfit at one of his rallies. I want you guys to take a look at the difference between how they covered Trump in a perceived racist comment from Trump versus how they just covered Jill Biden. We had a case where we had an African-American guy who was a fan of mine. Great fan. Great guy. In fact, I want to find out what's going on with him. You know what I'm... Oh, look at my African-American over here. Look at him. Are you the greatest? Do you know what I'm talking about? Okay. Okay, first of all, a deep breath. Deep breath, everybody. You really want to watch it when you say there's my African American. Sounds like ownership. Clearly. Yeah. Definitely sounds like ownership. Clearly. You missed the remake of Roots. <laughs> Everything with him is about color. Every single thing that he says. And that's, and that's why. It is under, for him, with him in particular, that's why it's under this you know, umbrella. He's the opposite of colorblind. When it comes to color, he has 20 20 vision, this guy. Everything is about I, color. But it's, and I honestly don't think he knows what he's saying. Oh, I don't no, think he, he hears listen, it. Baby, he, he knows. knows. Listen, no, no, no. He knows, oh, yes. but he doesn't I'm know from it in the way that we hear it. I'm from this generation, okay? I'm so from this generation. And we, we recognize sometimes that, yeah, older people will say something sometimes or say, oh, you know, I like the blacks. And you kind of know that they're not, they're not. They're not they're madness. not they're, they're not being poopy. No. They're not being poopy. But Just when somebody <laughs> says duty heads. <laughs> Bunch of no, heads. you don't want me to say what I mean. <laughs> you know. Can I Okay. I, I just found this quote that he was quoted on Politico and HuffPost, and this is uh, something that Donald Trump's, Trump once said, quote, I have black guys counting my money. I hate it. The only guys I want counting my money are short guys that wear yarmulkes all day. So he manages to be anti-Semitic and racist in the same sentence. He this guy, but he, he does not represent he does not. my he generation. Please don't say that. Yeah. He, he really knows. I can't. Yes. I, he knows, I, he knows what he's knows. saying. He knows what he's saying. He knows saying. exactly he knows what exactly. he's saying. Do you guys see the difference? Do you guys see the difference? This is clearly night and day. When a Democrat, Jill Biden, says something that clearly can be characterized as a racist remark. Oh, well, you know, it's her advisors. You know, I don't know who let her, you know, read this speech without going over it. You know, we, she just maybe did, she didn't know, blah, blah, blah. You know, it was racially insensitive. You know, just don't do it again. Just don't do it again. 
when Trump makes a remark, okay, that they deem to be racist, even though the guy clearly is praising a, a black supporter that he has, right, for beating up somebody that was wearing a KKK outfit at one of his rallies, again, going directly against the narrative that Trump is some type of KKK supporter, that Trump supporters are the KKK or whatever, right? Um, no, 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 he doesn't get the benefit of the doubt. He's a flat out racist, right? They're, they're not afraid to just call it what it is and, and say that this dude is racist. This is a racist remark and that he knows what he's saying, right? It's not no, oh, well, maybe it's the speech writers, maybe it's his advisors, uh, you know, didn't tell him not to say, no, he, he doesn't get that benefit of the doubt. He doesn't get that benefit of the doubt. It is just racist, right? Again, they almost have a panic attack over what Trump said. Jill Biden compares Hispanics to tacos. Uh, again, just don't do it again. Slap on the wrist, right? Slap on the wrist. It's amazing. But what I also want to talk about here real quick is, it, ain't it funny, guys, how the Democrats feel like they need to apologize for racially insensitive comments or racist comments, right? They feel the need to apologize for that, okay? However, the Democrats in the mainstream liberal media don't feel the need to apologize for things that I think are much worse than just making stupid comments like that, right? For example, like, I don't know, trying to intimidate Supreme Court justice, right, by uh, protesting outside of their houses or uh, basically having them chased out of the back of steakhouses, okay, or attempting to assassinate a Supreme Court justice, right, or making death threats to Republican politicians like Ted Cruz over uh, Democrat conspiracy theories about the election uh, that they push, saying that black people can't vote, that black people's votes are being suppressed, or Black Lives Matter slash Antifa riots in which, you know, you had people lose their lives, there was billions of dollars of damage across major cities in this country, they will not apologize for that. They don't feel the need to apologize for that or to even mention it or to say anything about it. But Jill Biden makes a comment about, you know, Hispanics and comparing them to breakfast tacos. Oh, you know, she needs to apologize. You know, uh, we need to address it. You know, don't do it again. Again, they're, they're correcting her. However, um, they refuse to acknowledge things that are much worse than that, right? There, there are things that the Democrat Party supports and has used rhetoric that is much worse than what Jill Biden said that they just completely ignore. They don't feel the need to talk about. But they felt the need to talk about Jill Biden making his comment about breakfast tacos and Hispanics. Again, it blows my mind what the Democrats feel the need to apologize about and what they don't feel the need to apologize about. They don't feel the need to apologize about things that actually really are killing folks that are causing harm, violence. They don't apologize for those things. But they apologize because they offend somebody racially or they offend LGBTQ or they offend some woke leftist, right, in their party. They apologize about that. They're quick to apologize about that. But they won't apologize about anything else. Things that actually really are hurting people. Again, it's, it's amazing how this works, right? It's absolutely amazing how this works. So uh, let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.